In this lesson, we are continuing with the triangle congruence, but adding more concepts and a little bit more of the application with our triangle congruence. So before we get started though, we are starting with this proof. So again, you always start with the given statement and then you always end with what you're trying to prove. So I would suggest since we're using this as our warm up here, to go ahead and pause the video, use the image also as your guide with how you're going to start this proof here and end this proof. So here with the proof, right, we always start with the given information. So we're given, so BC is congruent to side EC. How do we know this? This is given. And it's already marked for you, but I'll still go through. AC is also congruent to DC. That is given. And again, I'll go through just so the practice, right? What if you don't have the information uh, marked in your visual here? So we'll go through. So we are trying to prove that side AB is congruent to side DE. We're trying to now prove that these two sides are congruent. Well, first off, I uh, you should have noticed, what else do we have here in this image? vertical angles. So angle BCA is congruent to angle BCD, right? Because order matters. A has to match up with D. So how do we know again that these two angles are congruent to each other? With the definition of vertical angles or vertical angles property. So now what do you notice? What can we state? That these two triangles are congruent to each other. That triangle BCA is congruent to triangle ECD. How do we know that they're congruent to each other? By the side angle side theorem. Side angle side. So now why do that? Well, because can we now state that these two sides are congruent to each other? Yes, because we prove that the triangles are congruent to each other, why is it that these two sides now are congruent to each other? Because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So C, P, C, T, C. So now here, again, we're given the information and just continuing with C, P, C, T, C. You're already given that these two triangles are congruent to each other by, so here, oh, I forgot to also give you the information, sorry, that got cut off, but angle T is also equal to um, angle W here, so sorry about that. So here, with that information, now that we've got that, how do we know that they're congruent? By side, angle, side here. So now we're going to go ahead, though, and identify because we are going to solve for the given variable or given variables. So UT is Y plus 3. ST, 2Y plus 3. Angle T is here, so 20X plus 12. Then VW is 11, and angle W is 82. So again, these congruence, are, um, these values are congruent to each other. So to solve for the variable, you just set them equal to each other. So like for example, if we want to solve for x, that's the angles here. Angle T is congruent to angle W, they're corresponding. So 20x plus 12 is equal to 82. 20x is now equal to 70. So now when you divide, you get x is equal to 3.5. So same thing here. To solve for y. Now, which of these are we going to set equal to 11? Because we have VW, which has the one hash mark. UT. So that's just y plus 3 is equal to 11. Subtracting 3, y is equal to 8. So go ahead and pause the video now and try this U try here on your own. Now again, this information, sorry, got cut off, um, but here we do have 
the right angle. So we do have right triangles. And here we go. So here, these two triangles are congruent by what theorem? HL. So this is HL because you had the hypotenuse and from reflexive property, we have our um, one of our sides, our leg. So here, labeling AD is 3T plus 1. CD is 4T minus 3. Angle ABB, so this angle here is 32 degrees. And CDB, this angle here is 5X. So now here, all you had to do to solve for T, right? So these are um, corresponding. So you just had to set them equal to each other. 3T plus 1 is equal to 4T minus 3 here. So now here, just solving, you got to make sure to gather the variables, subtract 3T from both sides. Now I've got 1 is equal to, that's just 1T or T minus 3. At 3, you get T is equal to 4. Now here, we weren't given these markings, but again, how do we know that they're congruent? Because they're corresponding angles, and corresponding angles are congruent to each other, because the triangles are congruent. So 5x is equal to 32. Divide by 5, and x is equal to 6.4. So now here, B is a midpoint of A, H, and C, I. So B is a midpoint, it is in the middle. So if it's in the middle of AH, that means that it cuts this segment in half, it's the middle. So AB is equal to BH, because that's the definition of your midpoint. It's also the midpoint of CI. So CB is also equal to BI, because that's the definition of your midpoint. So here, are the triangles congruent to each other? Yes, they are. Why? Well, what theorem? Side, angle, side. So again, how do we know though that this is side, angle, side? Because what do we have? What property? Vertical angles. So not only are we using the definition of the midpoint to show that we have congruent sides. We also are using the definition of vertical angles to show that the angles are congruent to each other, hence side angle side. So go ahead and pause the video now and try the you try here on your own. And here we go. So D is the midpoint of F8. So by definition of midpoint, we can state that FG is equal to GH. So now that means, um, are the two triangles congruent to each other? Well, we do have another property, right? We have reflexive properties, so EG is equal to itself. Do we have any other properties? No. So can we state that these two triangles are congruent to each other? No. We do not have enough information. We cannot assume that we have a right triangle. We cannot assume that EF is equal to EH. So again, no assumptions can be made. All we were given were these two sides and that's it. So here, no, we do not have enough information. So now the last example. Here, just adding in for those who don't remember in the figure, this symbol here represents perpendicular. So JA is perpendicular to MI. So here, perpendicular. And JY is equal to AY. So JY is equal to AY. Are the two triangles congruent to each other? So let's check. Do we have any other properties that we can use? Yes, we have reflexive property. So can we state that these two triangles are congruent? Yes. So again, first off, by saying that they're perpendicular here, 
we're using the definition of perpendicular angles, 90 degree angles. So here we can also have the reflexive property, right? So due to the definition of our perpendicular, that reflexive property, what theorem can we use in this case? HL. Because this is the hypotenuse and we also have a leg. So go ahead and pause the video and try the U try on your own. And so here, and this will be mentioned in class, sorry, there was this typo here. So BC is perpendicular to AC and RS is perpendicular to QS. So sorry about that. So here, AB is equal to QR. BC is perpendicular to AC. So these two sides here, perpendicular. RS is perpendicular to QS. So here are the two triangles congruent to each other. Do we have enough information? Well, do we have any other properties that can be used? No. So again, can we state that these two triangles are congruent to each other? No. So again, we do not have enough information. Yes, we have the right triangle. We have the two hypotenuse are congruent to each other, but that's it. So here we do not have enough information. 